Well, I'm glad you talked me out of the Mohawk. I think these people deserve a little glamour in their political campaign. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Moira Rose outfits on Schitt's Creek. Oh, Alexis, I think you and I might need to purchase antibiotics. I believe we've just gone viral. For this list, we'll be looking at the best ensembles worn by the Rose family matriarch on the show. To be clear, it's the ensemble and not the wig that will qualify something for this list. Also, no costumes she dons will appear here, so as iconic as it is, you will not be seeing her look from the croning. So please, quiet your cause so that we may take up our cause redemption! So what's your favorite Moira Rose outfit? Be sure to let us know in the comments. All right, let's get to it. Number 10, warm and fuzzy. David, stop acting like a disgruntled pelican. In the season three premiere, Moira wears this ensemble for her first meeting as a town council member. Well, hello everyone. What time is curtain? The embellished black top and gloves already make her stand out from the crowd, considering everyone else has taken a more casual approach to their outfits. Is this what everyone's wearing? Well, I might lose the jacket. If we look to have given up on ourselves, how can we assure our constituents that we haven't given up on them as well? Of course, she takes it one step further with an absolutely dazzling black fluffy hat. It helps her stand tall, literally. As she says herself, such a carefully crafted look shows people she's ready and able to help. Naturally, she leans into the theatrics of the affair. Places, please. And if there's anything Moira Rose knows, it's how to dress the part. She's definitely the main character of this play. We were losing our audience. You saw the walkouts and on opening night. This is the theater, isn't it? Number nine, dressed to kill asbestos. <clears throat> oh, I wonder who that could be. It's television's Moira Rose. That's television's mom to you. <laughs> Excited for her chance to shine like the star she is, as the headliner of the town's asbestos fest, Moira bites off a little more than she can chew. Nine, ten, nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, like a good son, David offers to do their signature number on stage with her. Do you think we still have it? I'll go plug in my hair straightener. This is the ensemble she masterfully puts together for the performance. Since their duet is Christmas themed, you could even say it's Moira's take on festive glamour. Especially given the way she anchors the furry fringe on the outfit with a silver belt, classic beret, and red lipstick. Ding! Dong! Ding! Dong! Ding! Dong, ding, dong. On the first day of Christmas, my true luck gave to me the keys to a Lamborghini. Each piece, from the top and pants to the accessories, works together harmoniously to create a sleek and stylish look. Asbestos does not stand a chance. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay, may, 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 may. Number eight, campaigning in style. Good morning, Mrs. Rose. Here's your name tag. Oh, bless you, dear, but a name tag does not go with this ensemble. Oh, it's just so people know who you are. Not that people won't know when they see you in that outfit. Very shiny. Moira wears this stunning metallic number to the candidate's breakfast. She's hoping to get elected to city council and is up against Jocelyn. Well, I'm glad you talked me out of the Mohawk. I think these people deserve a little glamour in their political campaign. With its long sleeves and elaborate collar, she looks poised and radiates vote for me energy. The residents of Schitt's Creek, however, aren't exactly accustomed to such high fashion. Roland actually compares her to Elvis. And Elvis! I'm so glad you could make it. <laughs> Excuse me? This ensemble is actually the catalyst for the events that follow that episode, as Moira wonders if she's approachable, and Jocelyn begins worrying about her own wardrobe. I would vote for you based solely on the fact that you wore this outfit to the cafe for breakfast. You know, being approachable isn't that important anyway. The queen hasn't smiled since the 70s and her birthdays are still very well attended. It's just that impactful. Dan Levy has actually said that Moira style is consistently over the top because she firmly believes her life will return to normal soon. She is certainly not one to blend in in the meantime. Number seven, reborn in leather. It's time to set the record straight after a false story about Moira's death circulates online. I'm assuming you're not dead? All right, consider this camel's back broken. 
Who sends pink carnations? Initially reluctant, she ultimately decides to face the press that's come to town. This is not, not how I imagined my resurrection news to break. Impeccably dressed woman wanders out of Podunk Motel. No, that's not the headline. So she puts on her most distinguished outfit. She is film and television's Moira Rose, after all, no matter where she lives. This full-length hooded leather ensemble, complete with high-heeled booties, a curly wig, and a statement necklace, makes that abundantly clear. Just like her, this look is dramatic and elegant. It's unfortunate the press moves on to a story about a dead cat before they can see her in all her glory. She's not just alive in this look, she's living. I like the outfit you chose. Well, you're a big help, Stevie. Heading to the cafe. It's always nice to dress for dinner. Number six, a checkered goodbye. Moira. It's 6 a.m., John. I'm moving as fast as I can. It's no secret that Moira loves a good suit. From bird patterned to houndstooth ones, she rocks them like nobody else can. So this buffalo check one is a fitting choice for her final moments in Schitt's Creek, as the roses say their goodbyes. And make sure the girls are shipped in a temperature, temperature controlled, controlled cargo, cargo container. container. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's a quintessential black and white Moira look, with the structured and high fashion feel she's known for. Plus, with such a timeless choice, the sentimentality of the scene itself shines through. I love you. In other words, these Altazara pieces complement the moment without overshadowing it. In fact, they honor it. Plus, the lavish black bow gives it that little extra edge, making it a true Moira Rose original. Number five, Moira in the country. Moira's bag is stuck in Amish country. Oh, and her son is too. So the roses go on a road trip to get them. She opts for a cosmopolitan vibe with this lava for H&M dress paired with Chanel gloves, uniquely designed stockings, and possibly the highest heels ever. A particular amount of work went into the hat from Little Girl Design. I was worried sick, dear. Where's David? Or his bags? Costume designer Deborah Hansen described embellishing it with a little sparkle and some feathers to achieve a custom look. It is a true work of art. Well, it seems you've taken very good care of our pos possessions. I hope it wasn't too much of an imposition. Of the look, Catherine O'Hara said that, quote, it was one of the first times the roses drove somewhere. So, of course, Moira dresses up for that. We wouldn't have it any other way. What you did was impulsive, capricious, and melodramatic. But it was also wrong. Number four, watching Bebe in a silver dress. John, you're not still working on that cumbersome laundry hamper. I told you it's a playpen, Moira. I was hoping you were joking. Moira is headed out in this beautiful silver sequined dress when she finds out that Johnny has offered to babysit Roland Jr. Looking so elegant for a night of babysitting. Just dressed to the nines in choking hazard. Sadly, Jocelyn, I won't be here this evening to intercede. She ultimately decides to stay and help. Of course, for her, that means watching herself on TV and panicking when the baby spits up on Johnny. Ooh, that cannot be good, John. Its body is ejecting things. What did you do to it? Nothing. I, I changed his diaper, that's all. Considering she was probably overdressed to go to Ronnie's house, she's definitely overdressed for Roland Jr. But this dazzling look effectively speaks to the broader role of wardrobe on the show. The clothes tell a bigger story. In fact, Dan Levy has said that they are, quote, really the only reminder of where they came from. So while the average person would probably rather babysit in sweats, Moira Bebe sits in style. I think I just found the issue. It might be in the diaper. Oh, it was the Bebe. I'm so relieved. Number three, PVC chic. That's a beautiful day. And you're a beautiful subject. Sebastian, I must insist you stop with the flattery in due time. From the iconic patent MSGM piece she dons for the Schitt's Creek tourism video to this outfit, nobody can pull off high gloss black quite like Moira Rose. Oh, hello, you. This Raph Simmons number makes its debut when David's ex-boyfriend comes to town to collaborate with Moira. He's actually trying to get pictures to document her fall from grace. This blouse and dress combo shows that Moira is still an icon despite what Sebastian thinks. Sebastian, don't, please. This is my talk now, shoot later look, so this visage is off limits for, for the moment, please. Don't worry, I'm just using you for scale. It's this 
backdrop. Its tasteful and modern feel, juxtaposed against the vastness of the field, shows high fashion intricacy meeting small town simplicity. No, into the field. Further, uh, yeah, in the, into the field. Uh, yes, further. Sebastian, I was- Let uh, the field reveal itself to you. It's fitting considering the roses bring a distinct level of sophistication to Schitt's Creek. And according to Dan Levy, it took them, quote, an hour to figure out how to put it on. We're glad they persisted. Number two, red carpet ready. Well, sweetheart, if that's, if that's the dress you want, then- uh... It is, but you're right, John, it's not the time. So before I send her back, take a mental picture. In season five, Moira splurges on this stunning rose gold gown with ostrich feathers in anticipation of her movie premiere. What exactly are you getting shipped from Harrods of London? Family, I'd like you to meet a dear friend whom I've yet to meet. Give a warm dobrodoshi to my red carpet gown for the Crows premiere. Catherine O'Hara told Vanity Fair that its appeal lies in its airy feel, which contrasts nicely with Moira's usual clothes. And those are the shoes we're going with? What do you think? No, shoes later, as well as jewels. <gasps> what? Which contrasts nicely with Moira's usual clothes. We see the dress again a season later when she wears it to the premiere of her movie. You know, the one where actual crows attack everyone. Let the crowning commence. <laughs> O'Hara described it as Moira letting go of her, quote, armor. Interestingly, the price of the dress is a big subject when Moira first buys it. $3,700? What designer gave you that kind of discount? In real life, the cost was also hard to justify. The purchase of this Pamela Rowland masterpiece was only approved because it could appear in two different episodes. Well, everybody definitely got their money's worth. I mean, the first time I ever saw the dress, I was absolutely blown away. But the reason it's not number one is because I don't find it's representative of the type of outfit Moira usually wears, right? But our number one definitely is the most extra she's ever been, which is really saying something. So let's get through the honorable mentions and then we'll pick our top Moira Rose outfit. Family outing look. The only fringe thing about this look is the vest. David, isn't that your friend? Oh, I didn't recognize him clothes. A proud mom at Rose Apothecary's launch. Not all heroes wear capes, but Moira Rose rocks chainmail ones. I would shop here, John, even without the nagging sense of obligation. And look at, look at the labels on everything. Rose Apothecary. The Rose name on another plucky young business. Peacock collar. Ruffles are this girl's best friend. No, this tastes like something one should not put in their mouth. It's fruit wine. Whoever heard of fruit wine? Doesn't matter. It's a business. I'll make it work. It's next to a landfill, John. He said former landfill. Metallic dress to tackle the town council. Moira shines bright in this silver number. I'm speaking about what we have allowed to happen to this town. Everyone leaving their old things here and there like some citywide garage sale. I deserve better. We deserve better. Jazzagal's audition dress. This outfit makes Moira's audition extra special. Someone loved me all night long. It should have, it should have been you. You. That's the end. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, marriage officiant outfit. Moira wears this extravagant white ensemble to officiate David and Patrick's wedding in the series finale. It's a bold choice, which is why it's the right one. With the addition of gold accessories and a flawless wig, it reflects her regal personality perfectly. Good. Good evening, everyone. It's also heavily influenced by papal style, which you can thank Catherine O'Hara for. To make their vision a reality, Deborah Hansen chose this Alexander McQueen dress and got a milliner to make the mitre style headpiece. Our lives are like little baby crows carried upon a curious wind, and all we can wish for our families, for those we love, 
is that that wind will eventually place us on solid ground. O'Hara described it as a, quote, awe-inspiring look with a real, quote, reverence to it. It's just as outrageous an outfit as you'd expect, yet it's filled with a deep respect for the occasion. I now pronounce you husband and husband. You may kiss each other. It's her tribute to David and Patrick's love, and it is marvelous. Oh, someone has to hold it together. There's a time and place for sentimentality, and your only son's wedding day is hardly the moment. Iconic. Just iconic. It's going to be a Halloween costume for years. Now, I know we've missed some of your favorites because we are limited to 10, so let's use the comment section to rejoice in all the wonderfulness that is Moira Rose's fashion sense. Be sure to let us know your favorites there, or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See ya.